Now where in Ant-Man's quantum world am I? The ant wondered as she waved her antennae through the air, trying her best to smell what lay beyond. This all appeared very strange to her. Everything was just so unfamiliar. She thought she'd memorized these Hacienda del Doradan lands, like the back of her pretarsis. But suddenly, tonight, it was like she had woken up to a totally different kingdom. Something wasn't right. And then suddenly, ah, an itch. The plague of body mites that had touched the entire ant colony as of late had sadly made its way onto this ant's body. But though encumbered by the mites, the ant had to keep going. Her job tonight was to bring back food to the rest of the colony. But emerging from the nest to find this strange world above ground truly psyched out this ant as she cautiously tried her best to navigate the foreign terrain, which was strangely oscillating, bobbing up and down in eerie waves. In fact, upon further investigation, it appeared as though she was completely surrounded by water. She was on a raft of plants. So now the question was, where do you go when you don't know where the heck you are? Maybe here. Hmm. Something doesn't smell too right on this side. Or perhaps over here. Okay, something smells pretty interesting in that direction. Yes, it's a fellow ant from the Golden Empire. Perfect. It was time to go meet her and figure out what she knows might be going on here. But now to get to her. Shall I try this way? Hmm. No. My anti senses are telling me I need to go around this way. The ant makes her way around the outside of this floating plant to try to get to her fellow colony member who didn't seem to want to move from her spot. Man, navigating the confusing entanglement of unfamiliar plants was proving to be quite the challenge for this ant. She felt lost again, and quite disoriented, and itchy. How did she ever wander out here in the first place? And all this time, she couldn't quite put a mandible on what smelled totally off about all this. But she knew that once she could compare her notes with those of her fellow Golden Empire colony member, she could get all the answers she was looking for. The ant crossed over to the other side to join her sister. When reunited with her sister ant, she reached out into the darkness of the leaf fold in which she hid. Hey sis, isn't all this pretty weird? Let's go find food together. But the fellow Golden Empire ant was not moving from her spot. How odd. She knew something, and in just a moment, this ant too would get all the answers it needed. It decided to wander off on its own to try its best to get back to its business of finding some food for the colony. You know, it was okay that things were a little different. Not a problem for this ant. They were the Golden Empire after all, always victorious in the face of danger. And hmm, what an interesting rock. You guys totally should have seen them. The day I introduced them into the Hacienda del Dorado, it was hilarious. I could hear the lid clicking as they hopped around inside. The moment I lifted the lid, like a jack-in-the-box, the death sprites sprung out onto the scene, revealing themselves to us for the first time. AC family, let's have a look, shall we? They appeared rather froggish for toads. All that wet, slimy, and squishy skin. And sure enough, upon further researching these painted toads that are scientifically known as Kalula Picta, native to the Philippines where I live, they actually don't belong to the family of true toads at all. 
So for the purposes of this video, we'll call them painted toads or frogs, even if they're technically microhylid frogs. Boing. And they jump like frogs too. So if you're new to the channel and are wondering why the heck so many people care about watching a video about frogs in a terrarium, well, first off, welcome to the Antiverse. What you're witnessing here is the beginning of phase B of what we, the AC family, call Project Cloverfield, the introduction of death sprites. We all have been anticipating this deployment of death sprites, i.e. these painted toads into this terrarium called the Hacienda del Dorado, because these toads have a very special and important purpose, to kill a population of zombie, mite-infected ants living in this terrarium. To catch you up to speed real quick, not too long ago, these lands were ruled by a beloved, thriving, massive super colony of yellow crazy ants called the Golden Empire. An OG colony on this channel, loved by millions. With seven queens, millions of loyal workers, and a force none could stop. Until a plague of parasitic ant blood-sucking mites crippled the entire colony and reduced them to a sick, weakened population of just a few thousands. We scrambled to extract as many ants as we could from the Hacienda del Dorado and quarantine a good portion of the colony to treat them using predatory hypoaspis mites, which eat the bad mites, and as we saw last week, has helped the colony recover. But the remaining mite-infected ants in the Hacienda del Dorado needed to be exterminated lest the mites went on to infect all other neighboring ant kingdoms and creatures in my ant room. And so guys, here we are. The first three death sprites have landed in the Hacienda del Dorado, our biological assassins, to annihilate the zombie mite-infected ants. And what ended up happening from this moment on is a story that will leave you mind blown. The events that happened this week were nothing less than epic, suspenseful, full of problem solving, crises and perseverance, and oh yeah, cuteness overload. And by the end of it all, I was left in utter breathlessness at the miraculous splendor of nature unfolding before our eyes. This has got to be one of my absolute favorite episodes on this channel. So sit back and enjoy how I created a haven for death spreads and a hell for zombie might infected ants. Oh yeah, and AC family, you guys will love the major event happening at the end. It was the first night our three painted toads would spend in the Hacienda del Dorado, and I observed them carefully to see if they would actually perform and eat the ants like we were hoping they would. At this point, the mite plague was bad. It pained me to see these tainted, mite-infected worker ants encumbered by their blood-sucking mites. It was as if they no longer were ants of the Golden Empire, but were like infected cancer cells that needed to be destroyed before the cancer would metastasize and spread. The Golden Empire ants, which used to work around the clock when they were healthy, were now only emerging at night when less predators were around in attempts to preserve their numbers as best they could. But oh, the irony of it all. Tonight they were gathered around and feeding on this rotten piece of banana placed here precisely to bring them out. It has also attracted the attention of the resident guardian goblin, seen in last week's video, a house gecko, who came to drink from the banana's sweet juices. But this gecko was not interested in our ants. In fact, it was even more interested in eating the fruit flies the banana attracted to eat the ants discreetly wandering the grounds tonight. I was really counting on the death sprites to prove their worth. AC family, check out this pile of leaves. Below it lies one of our painted toads now. It comes out for a breather. Now based on what I've been able to observe, these painted toads are not foragers when hunting for food, but are more ambushers in hunting style. They kind of sit still and wait patiently for food to come near. Have a look at those unique and gorgeous platinum-colored eyes. And oh, movement. It spotted something approaching and retreated under the leaves. Our death sprite was in ambush position, and it stared at its food crawling about nearby. A 
an ant, dragging its gaster around, likely from the torment of biting mites. My heart raced, watching the toad, watching the ant, like an assassin waiting for the right time to strike. It shocked me how patient the toad was, not moving from its spot for a very long time, until the ant got close enough, and then... I was relieved to watch our death sprite eat its first ant. Over the next three hours, I watched it consume two more ants, but this feeding rate was a bit concerning to me. You see, assuming the toad ate an average of one ant an hour, that means that one toad could consume about 8 to 12 ants a night. And with only three toads in the Hacienda del Dorado, that only meant an average of 24 to 36 ants eaten every single night. This was simply not enough to kill the estimated hundreds of ants left living in these lands in due time. We needed these ants, along with the mites on their bodies, eaten ASAP. And now that we knew our death sprite's rate of ant consumption, we now knew they wouldn't be able to carry out their mission alone as a three-toed group. They needed some backup. And I had the perfect plan brewing to make that happen. AC family, behold our second troop of death sprites. Within these containers are 15 highly equipped, able-bodied, painted toads, each hungry and ready to eat Golden Empire ants upon sight. With 15 painted toads bringing the death sprite count to 18, collectively eating an average amount of up to roughly 216 ants a night, this was a much more promising force at eliminating our infected ant population in the Hacienda del Dorado. But before I could introduce the toads into these territories, there was a very important and key change I needed to make to these lands before introducing the new troop. And that, AC family, is where the most epic journey began. The man who gave these painted toads to me said that they can survive in these containers for a few days without problems, provided I change the bedding and water daily. I knew these guys wouldn't be staying in here too long, however. What I was about to do was a pretty easy project to pull off in my mind. But little did I know, up ahead was what was going to be the most painstaking undertaking I'd ever worked on as your creator of worlds, as well as some surprising results that would go down in history as the coolest thing I've ever created in the Antiverse. Behold, the new pond I'd installed into the Hacienda del Dorado to provide our toads with the moisture they needed. It offered a satisfactory watering hole for our three painted toads. But now that we were going to add 15 more toads into the mix, this watering hole would be like 18 people sharing a bathroom. It was not enough. It wasn't just a crowding issue though. It was also very much so a health hazard. As this small body of water could become a poisonous cesspool once ammonia builds up from the frog's waste. And the frogs having such permeable skin, so permeable in fact, that frogs even absorb dissolved oxygen from the air through their skin, would quickly absorb the poisonous ammonia and die. And so AC family, as creator of worlds, I decided the Hacienda del Dorado was going to have a brand new pond. But not just any pond, this was going to be the most epic body of water that these lands had ever seen. The Hacienda del Dorado actually once had a body of water, if you recall the Golden Springs, back in its open concept days, before it was removed at the onset of the mite outbreak. It was a glass receptacle that housed a waterfall over an impressive rockscape with plants and moss growing epiphytically on its surface. But the problem with this setup, though beautiful, was it still featured a body of water contained in glass that sort of floated in the air in a weird state. An aquarium within an aquarium, so to speak. It was more of a concept design and not so much a naturalistic one. But this time, AC family, I wanted to attempt what I wasn't able to achieve with the Golden Springs. This time, I was going to set out 
to create a completely aquatic region within the Hacienda del Dorado. No floating water receptacle, but a functioning, bioactive, in-ground water world. Turning the lands into a true marshland haven for our death sprites to thrive in and do their great work at eliminating remaining ants. But this was where all the problems started. Here we go. My plan was to completely dig out the earth at the eastern region of the terrarium. As I removed the driftwood, I could see mite-infected ants scurrying about. I began to clear the area I imagined in my mind would be ideal for submerging underwater. I had a rough idea as to what I wanted the pond to look like, but I was going to improvise as I went along, seeing as I'd never done anything like this before. The Selva de Fuego, the part water, part land paludarium of the Fire Nation, my fire ant colony, was already built with a water partition at its genesis. So that was easier to construct. This pond, however, was truly going to be an involved engineering and biological design project, pushing my terrarium and aquarium making skills to its very limits. So now I needed physical barriers to keep all the water contained. And so the best thing I could muster up were these. Plastic Tupperware type containers cut into pieces with scissors. I also had some aquarium safe non-toxic silicone to bind the wall together and into place. And so I went straight to work. First, I laid out all the Tupperware pieces down in the general shape that I hoped for the pond to assume. Eventually, I was happy with this general form for our new pond. What do you guys think? I went in to lay a thick amount of silicone to bind all the Tupperware pieces into the places in which I had arranged them. I'd accidentally bought black silicone of the same brand, but at this point, I figured it didn't matter as we weren't going to see the silicone anyway. But oh, more about that later. And then, it was done. It looked messy, but I knew when this was all finished, it would look spectacular. At least in my mind it did. I allowed this entire arrangement to dry and cure overnight, shining a bright light over the construction site to deter any of the three frogs from coming to the area. Now even though the painted toads still had their pond, I made sure to also water the lands to give them some extra moisture for the night. In the shadows, I spotted one of our death sprites, waiting quietly for insects to pass by, watching me closely. What a gorgeous creature. Another thing that occurred to me in this moment was that this painted toad was probably quite lonesome. You see, in the wild, these painted toads live in large groups of up to hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals, where they gather en masse in ponds, rivers, and marshes. Worry not, my little toad. When I'm done, you'll have a huge new gang to meet and frolic with, together in a frog haven. The next morning, when all had dried, I had to construct three final details to the pond. Now check this out, guys. I wanted this area here, closest to the glass, to act like the bank of a river, a mossy shelf, which would act as sort of a shallow waiting area for the frogs, a frog beach, if you will. And to do that, I had to remove the current pond from its spot, as it was in the way. I then began to lay on the silicone, which would bind the shelf, this Tupperware cross-section, to the entire pond structure. See where I'm going with this yet, guys? Oh, this was going to look so cool! I made sure to use a generous amount of silicone to secure it all together, as I didn't want any leaks. The next structure on my list was also going to be pretty epic. After laying a ton of silicone, I laid down two more pieces to create another shelf. You'll see what this shelf is for in just a moment. Next, I had to silicone and mask the bare Tupperware with artificial rock. As much as I love the look of bare Tupperware in my setups, not. I wanted the final result of this pond to look as natural as possible. In my mind, I wanted to make it so that once this area was filled with water and decorations added, we wouldn't be able to tell that it was completely man-made. To fill in some of the spaces, I also siliconed in some real rocks to the bankwork. I allowed all of this to dry and cure once again overnight. But to temporarily replace the toad's pool, I added this bowl and filled it with some fresh water. This was going to be the last night they would be bathing in such a small puddle of water. Or at least, this was what I had thought. I turned off the lights so the toads could hunt 
in peace. And so, AC family, the big day had come. The day our new epic pond was going to be born. And boy, did I have a surprise for you. I laid down the soil substrate and placed in the decorative rocks that I envisioned might look good in the pond. Now my aquascaping skills were being put to the test. I never really know what the final outcome would be when creating these biological worlds. But I always hoped the finished results would be pretty sweet. Alright guys, and now to reveal the surprise. AC family, perhaps the coolest feature of this entire pond is this. Do you guys recognize it? Yep, it's the rock face of the Golden Springs. Many of you guys asked what I did with the Golden Springs after removing it from the Hacienda del Dorado. And well, of course I kept the entire unit, just in case. And I'm so glad I did, because now the time had come to reinstall it back into the territories. This time, in a proper, more naturalistic orientation. I had siliconed it the day before to the side wall of the terrarium, and allowed the entire thing to dry overnight. I then went in to gather some of the substrate which contained a lot of the valuable beneficial bacteria needed to help neutralize ammonia and other toxic nitrogenous compounds resulting from the frog's waste in our pond. I laid all this bio-rich muck onto the bottom of our pond. This was it, AC family. The completion of our awesome pond was here. I poured in the purified water. Yes! After all our hard work over two days, it felt so good to watch our beloved project come to life. With all the pond water now in, I installed the filter and pump to power the waterfall of the Golden Springs. I plugged in the filter and held my breath. I was really hoping this would all work out. I poured in some water through the top of the spring to get the pump flowing. And AC family, in the end, this is what it all came to. Success! A pond and waterfall, complete with a waiting shelf, bioactive substrate, decorations, and just the beauty of natural wetland splendor. Wow! Can you believe this, guys? It actually worked, AC family. I made sure to add some stability product to help promote the proliferation of more beneficial bacteria in these waters. I then went ahead and added a couple raspora fish from the old Golden Springs, some java moss, as well as two red shrimp. These four creatures were enough for this new aquatic environment for now, until the entire system took the time it needed to biologically stabilize. The raspora fish danced and played in the turbulent dripping waters. Our pond was now complete, and I couldn't believe we had pulled it all off easily and problem free. Or at least, this is what I thought. A couple hours later, I came back to this. The water level had dropped considerably. Oh no, could it be what I think it was? Looking at the soil on the other side, It did look a bit damp. No, don't be silly, I said to myself. Perhaps moisture was just seeping into all the fake rock of the setup. I just needed to add more water. But then a few hours after that, I came back to this nightmare. The water level had dropped even more. And underneath the water bowl, I saw this. My worst nightmare had come true. There was definitely a leak somewhere. I had to abort the project and assess where we had went wrong. I unplugged the water filter and fished out our four aquatic creatures. Then I needed the help of my trusty shop vac to suck up all the water from the soils. It was crazy. Every time I sucked up some water, more water came flowing in. It was now nighttime and I knew I had to fix all of this ASAP. So I was prepared to work overtime through the night to make my necessary repairs. One of the toads stood from its corner again, watching me work the whole time. And that made me feel bad. This was supposed to be the night it could enjoy the company of other toads in the crystal flowing waters of its new custom pond. I felt as though 
I had failed it. I began to clear away some of the swampy mess on the other side of the pond walls. Assessing the damage, my guess was that the leak was somewhere here. Whatever the case, before proceeding any further with repairs, there was something important that I needed to attend to first, before proceeding any further. So the 15 frogs had now spent three nights living in their holding containers. I changed their moss beddings and water every day, but I wasn't going to let them spend another night in these containers while I was taking the time to repair the pond. And so AC family, you will not believe what I had planned for them. All right, let's do this. Behold, an empty half tank with some sphagnum moss. I began to add more sphagnum moss and broke it all up evenly so it could nicely carpet the bottom. Don't get any ideas, guys. It's just moss. Next, with this mossy carpet, I needed to make it frog-friendly. I poured in some fresh purified water, then moved the moss around, pressing it into the water so it would soak up all that delicious moisture. I wanted to create a place where if I were a frog, I'd want to hang out. I then placed in some fake rock for shelter. I also anchored in some plants removed from the Hacienda del Dorado during pond construction. These plants would help absorb some of the toxic ammonia and nitrogenous compounds from the frog's waste. There we go. Looking totally awesome already. Pun intended. <laughs> and now to create a place to attract some frog food. I mashed up some banana and placed it in a bowl. This bowl of mashed banana would be perfect at attracting fruit flies and even ants to the site which would be perfect for our painted toads. And now for the shocker. AC family, are you ready for this? So I didn't really have a huge tank on hand to house 15 painted toads, and the Hacienda del Dorado certainly wasn't ready to accommodate them. But I did realize that what I did have was the perfect 200 gallon enclosure for them. AC family, check out my 200 gallon enclosure. My guest shower, it was perfect clean, large, and sealed. And I don't use this shower often, so why not? That's right, AC family. I was going to move 15 toads into my shower. The idea was crazy, but it would have to do for now until the pond was completed. I placed the two containers of painted toads onto the moss. The frogs were just waking up now and emerging from their day's slumber. Talk about cute. At first, they weren't moving much from their containers. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, the toads began to spring into action. Some toads decided they would reconceal themselves into the moss. It was just hilarious watching these tiny toads hopping around my shower. I also made sure to moisten the tiles to keep the wandering toads hydrated. I also situated some ramps using the container covers to help the toads find their way back in if they needed it. But I knew these toads were more than capable of hopping in if they so wanted. So funny interacting with these shy toads. But little did I know, these toads would soon warm up to me. And of course they would. I'm literally giving them my home. <laughs> So through the night, I stayed up to drain remaining water from the mess. I needed to locate the source of the leak so I could make necessary repairs. It blew my mind that the pond structure leaked. I had thought, hey, some silicone and plastic Tupperware walls should be enough to hold some water in place, right? But apparently not. I guess this is why engineers and architects undergo rigorous schooling to make things like this happen on a large scale. I filled the pond with more water, and with the help of my shop vac, I watched carefully to identify where the leak was coming from. And voila! The leak was coming from this area here. I did my best to wipe the area of repair, clean of water and debris. I sucked up all water from the pond. I then lined paper towels to keep moisture from the soils away from the area of repair. I then used a special sealant used for sealing leaks in pipes and roofs to cover all areas where the silicone was in contact with the plastic. My guess was the silicone wasn't attaching well to the plastic Tupperware surface. 
I used a paintbrush to help smoothen out this layer of sealant. Then once that dried, I covered the sealant with another high-performing sealant. As backup, I couldn't afford for there to be another leak. Overnight, I used a mini hairdryer to help speed up the drying process. I did everything I could to make this repair work. I frequently threw out paper towel when it had soaked up full of water and kept this entire trench area clean of debris while the sealant dried. This time, our pond construction would be fail-proof. It had to be for the sake of our beloved toads. Through the night, while waiting for sealant layers and reparations to dry, I would make frequent visits to the toads in my shower to help pass the time and de-stress. As you can imagine, at this point, I really needed it. And I wasn't just going to sit there all night and watch sealant dry. I quickly learned that not only were these frogs hilariously cute, but they were also pretty incredible. They could hop up and stick to a flat surface for an impressive amount of time. They also were beginning to become less shy and would often just sit and watch me. Some individuals were even bold enough to come check me out. This toad totally hopped on me and jumped onto my knee, staring up at me in bewilderment. My heart shrieked inside at the cuteness. They were just so nimble with their Spider-Man moves. Could we be looking at the evolutionary transition of a toad to tree frog or a gecko-like toad? Overall, these very active painted toads were a delight to watch do their thing all night. And I was happy to offer them a temporary hotel resort in my shower. In the morning, they always left me with a mess to clean up. And sometimes a straggler, which I gently helped into the moss so it could crawl into bed. Mmm, nope, I don't think this rock pit will do. Aha, much better. Sleep tight, my death sprite. When you wake, there will be an awesome pond and a haven for toads waiting for you. And so, the moment of truth. AC family, it was time to try again and test our pond after a whole night, day, and following night of repairs. All layers had dried, and in my mind, there was just no way there could be another leak. Or at least I hoped. Could you guys imagine the pressure and anxiousness I was feeling at this point? I mean, how could there be a leak, right? We were going on three layers now. I cleared the trench so that I could fully see if there was any leak happening. I took a deep breath and began to fill the pond up with water. OMG, it was working! No! My heart cried out. It looked like water was pouring out from several places. I was broken. I was destitute. I was exhausted. And most of all, I was hurt that I had once again failed the death sprites, who didn't deserve my sheer ineptitude. I was so stupid. How could I let this happen? The three death sprites were going to spend yet another night without a proper pond and restricted access in the Hacienda del Dorado. The 15 toads would be spending yet another night in my shower. And who knows how many more attempts it would take to perfect this pond. I decided to give up and resolved to let the 15 frogs go later that evening. I needed to come up with a better plan to get rid of the remaining golden empire and a little voice in my head that suggested I just completely throw out the entire Hacienda del Dorado altogether, throwing away the years it took to develop the complex biological soil system inside, so I could just start anew, haunted me. As I cleaned the shower, preparing the frogs for their release, back into the wild where they were collected, I looked into the moss habitat I made for them. The fruit had attracted a lot of ants, and one toad had retired in that area, probably after an entire night, feasting on ants. I saw a lot of toads huddling up in the moss, looking cozy, some snuggling together under the fake rock. And oh, there was another straggler. There was always that one frog in the mornings that had trouble hopping over the wall and just decided to camp out somewhere 
outside the mossy wetland. And that, AC family, was when an idea hit me. No! I had to do it for every little soil creature in the Hacienda del Dorado, for these toads, for the Golden Empire, and for all the ants and creatures of the Antiverse. We, the AC family, were not quitters, and we were not going to be defeated. I had another plan, an awesome plan, to make the Hacienda del Dorado great again. I was going to totally trump the leaks and build a wall. One thing I learned upon further investigation is that not all silicones are created equal and that some silicones were made specifically to not only hold water within a barrier, but also to bind to both glass and plastic. I think my mistake the first time was the silicone I used was made to attach to glass, but not the Tupperware surface. I went in to smother all areas with a ton of this new silicone. In the hard to reach and see places, I had to completely fill my hand with a blob of silicone and literally smother it onto the walls, floor, and layers of ceiling laid in the previous days. I made sure to reach all the way to the back of the pond and literally stuff the area with silicone. I smothered the silicone everywhere I could, emptying eight whole canisters of the stuff on all areas from front to back. There was no way I would allow another leak. Look at how much there was now. And now, for the wall. This glass wall, which I was hoping to position in this area, was designed as a contingency plan. In case after all this, there would be another leak. I actually felt this wall was a great idea as well, because it could also section off a sort of marshy region. Kind of like where the 15 death sprites were living now. Watching them cuddling up in all that wet moss gave me the idea to replicate that environment in a special wet section between the pond and the dry land of the terrarium that was separate from the pond, but also separate from the dry land. It allowed us to create this transitionary wet area without having to flood out the entire land portion of the terrarium and completely drown our necessary soil creatures. If there was a leak, then hey, no problem. It would be a wet area anyway. If it didn't leak, awesome. I'd be filling it with water anyhow. I only really needed the silicone binding this glass wall to the glass of the terrarium to work at keeping water from escaping. Let's cross our fingers, AC family, and hope this finally works. That night, while waiting for the silicone to dry and cure, I offered the toads a special treat of baby roaches, along with a promise that this was going to be their final night living in my shower. And if things didn't work out, I'd surely let them go. But that I also felt like things were going to work this time. I also released some baby roaches into the darkness of the Hacienda del Dorado with a special promise to the three original death sprites that had been so patient that they would be united with a huge group coming soon, along with a haven for toads. It would be the last time they would need me to shower them. The next day, the silicone had dried. It was time to try one last time. If this didn't work, I don't know what I would do. But inside, I wasn't going to accept failure. I went in with the water, and I watched the barrier like a hawk. The pond began to fill up, and I held my breath, feeling my heart beating fast in my chest. And what happened next, AC family, will completely shock you. It worked. The water was still as it held its form within our newly sealed pond barrier. I held my breath as I stared in silence at the water, which looked still as glass.
But the question was, would this pond remain intact permanently? Or would it spring a leak in some unforeseen location again? Only time would tell. But you know what, AC family? When night arrived, several hours later, the pond was still 100% full-bodied, without a single leak in sight. AC family, it was finally time to have some fun. Later that night, I fixed up the Hacienda del Dorado to prepare the lands for the homecoming of the Death Sprites. The Guardian Gecko had emerged from hiding to have a look at the new Hacienda del Dorado that lay before her. And I bet she couldn't believe her reptilian eyes. AC family, it is with great honor that I present to you the new Hacienda del Dorado, haven for death sprites. It was all just so magical. I was completely spellbound by the sheer beauty of this haven for frogs. Check out the natural spring, feeding filtered clean waters to our pond. I just couldn't look away. Let me show you around. So the plants originally growing on the Golden Springs ended up wilting due to the change in moisture while the Golden Springs were out of commission, despite all my feeble attempts to water them every night. So, I simply planted some new moss, some new bird's nest fern, and my absolute favorite, some hanging Spanish moss, to help some of the water trickle down into the pond nicely. At the surface, I've positioned some branches with some java moss attached to them, bathed by the golden springs to keep them green. I also added some water lettuce and some frog bit, floating plants to help eat up any ammonia buildup in the pond. And guys, Look, our mossy shelf, exactly how I'd envisioned it, the perfect frog beach. I never in my wildest dreams would have ever imagined our pond would end up looking this beautiful. But guys, now it's time to show you another cool area and hang out for the frogs, the marsh. Now remember that trench section behind the wall? Well, to turn the area into that mossy wetland we dreamed of, I first added a layer of activated carbon. Although the sealants and silicones I used are allegedly non-toxic and safe, I still wanted to add this purifying layer of activated carbon to absorb any impurities in this area for times to come. Then on top of this carbon layer, I added some clean black sand. Next, I added a layer of sphagnum moss. Don't get any ideas, guys. It's just moss. And after adding a tiny bit of soil and some live moss, this is what our new marsh area looked like. It was wet, pillowy, mossy, and just ready to envelop any frog wanting to snuggle in its marshy goodness. In the really wet, deeper areas, I placed in some java moss as a cushion. One thing I wanted to show you guys real quick was that I was able to cover all the unsightly silicone up against the glass with these decal removable stickers from walleuphoria.com, which I cut to shape. It's great because you can't even see it unless you look closely. While gutting out the Hacienda del Dorado, I actually found this huge piece of driftwood deep inside the soils, which I don't even remember putting in here, but it was perfect at creating a border between the wetlands and the drylands of the territories. Which brings us, AC family, to the other half of the newly renovated territories. After hours of fun soaking in our ever refreshing pond, the frogs could then choose to swim up the beach and hop their way over to drier grounds. The death sprites could choose to hop deep into the thickened foliage down this pathway under a grand wooden arch, which leads deep into a plethora of awesome habitat for the painted toads to set up ambush. Or they could travel this way into these tighter spaces if they so wish. 
And then, once the frogs dried out, they could return to the hydrating golden springs and pond to bathe. Isn't that neat? What a cool space to live if you were a frog, right? And AC family, check this out real quick. You may notice a bunch of dried leaves laying around. And well, these leaves are actually talisai leaves, which upon decaying, release tannins and other nutrients into the water that help condition the water and even acts as an antibiotic. This would prove super beneficial for our painted toads with their super permeable skin once they hide under these leaves and in the water in which the leaves are decaying. I've scattered them everywhere. Finally, this driftwood piece was repositioned and stocked with a new assortment of plants, including bromeliads, both old and new, pothos, and gorgeous flowering telangias. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. It was time to add our team of death sprites. Put on your wetsuits, guys. This is going to be a blast. The toads were now awake, but they had no idea of the epicness ahead. I carefully collected each toad and placed them into this container of fresh water to cleanse them for their homecoming. One by one, I collected them each by hand, searching carefully through the moss, until I finally collected all 15 frogs. Look at them! Time to take you to your new home, my death sprites! And here they were, sitting atop the Hacienda del Dorado, and I couldn't help but feel a variety of emotions. I felt joy that Project Cloverfield B was making its final execution now. Relief in light of all the trouble it took for us to get here, and gratitude that I had chosen to not give up on our plans. And these death sprites... Okay, okay. They were clearly eager to be released. Let's get to it. First in is Andy Warhol. Next, Pablo Picasso and Vincent Van Gogh. Andy, Pablo, and Vincent stood completely still in a daze. Next, I added in Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Henri Matisse. Wow! Leonardo went to hide completely underwater. Henri and Michelangelo were just chilling like villains. Vincent was way back there under the waterfall. Next was Jackson Pollock, Edvard Munch, Claude Monet, and René Magritte. The frogs were loving it. Pablo was just chilling on the beach, and Claude floating on his water lettuce raft. And my Michelangelo, Look at you mountain climbing the Golden Springs. How appropriate that you're up there. Henri found a cozy spot to hang within the Talangia. While Leonardo, Pablo, and Claude continued to enjoy the calm shallows, waiting for the final death sprites to be added. Salvador Dali and Yayoi Kusama. Rembrandt. Frida Kahlo. And finally, Raphael. And that was it! The Death Sprites were in! And from the looks of things, they were quickly getting used to their brand new surroundings. Pablo was quick to find dry land, and found his beachfront home under some moss. Salvador loved his waterfall view, but it didn't beat Michelangelo's mountainside penthouse suite up in the Golden Springs. The Death Sprites could now set up their stations, and I couldn't wait to watch them perform their work at eliminating mite-infected ants. It was the first night of the Death Sprites. Yayoi had found his outpost on some water lettuce. Chilling in the mosses of our marsh was Claude, ready to take on the ants. There's Henri and Rembrandt in a cozy spot in the marsh. And look up there! Vincent wanted to go station himself by the wet mosses of the waterfall shelf. Also awake and ready to feed, up in the rocks, was Michelangelo. He was committed to catching something tonight. And so was Pablo, who patiently waited for something to pass by. And alas, the hour had come that the ants were emerging.
Leonardo had his eye on this ant, which appeared to be lost and disoriented. But Yayoi was also eyeing this promised meal. Mites covered the ant's body from head to foot, which meant the ant was conveniently distracted. Just a little closer, Yayoi thought, and he could catch it, but he couldn't strike too early, or it might get away. Here it comes. Oh no! It got away, but now it was Leonardo's chance for a meal. And... Oh! Here it comes! Could this get any easier? Right into my mouth! Ah! My eye! The startled ant got away. But I didn't fret, because as the night went on, I enjoyed watching our death sprites' successful catches. Michelangelo, Claude, Pablo, and guess who else I spotted, hiding out by the wood? It was that one original death sprite who would always watch me from the shadows. He was a witness to all the troubles I went through this week. But after having surely met his new toad family, I'm sure he was now at peace. And so I named him Bob Ross. Bob was in my mind a good symbol of patience, perseverance, and triumph. Eat and be merry, Ross. I fulfilled my promise. It's been a whole week since I've added our death sprites to the new Hacienda del Dorado, and the refreshing waters of our pond have retained its water and continued to provide moisture to our plants, aquatic animals, and frogs. I cannot begin to express how satisfying it was to enjoy witnessing the success of a project which took so long to perfect. I knew our waters were clean despite 18 toads living about as our fish and shrimp were vivacious and healthy. Over time, I began to notice less and less ants within the Hacienda del Dorado. Had it meant that the death sprites were successful at pulling off Project Cloverfield B? I don't know for sure yet, but in case there were no more ants, I made sure to always lay pieces of fruit around the territories to attract droves of fruit flies who also enjoyed stationing themselves conveniently around the pond, which was perfect for our death sprites. I even caught the cleverest of toads, waiting around the fruit for flies to land. Needless to say, these high IQ toads were the fattest of the bunch. I also supplemented their diet with baby roaches, so the toads could have their fill. It was amazing to be part of the coming together of this magnificent piece of nature. And although it came with a lot of trials, and reworking of plans. The biggest thing I learned from all this was that if you really want something to happen, if you want to achieve something truly great, it takes some real hardcore perseverance and commitment to perfection. And once you're all done, and you've reached your desired end, you'll look back at all the work you've done in awe and gratitude. I realized today I just needed to promise to do my best, and even Mother Nature was willing to wait for me to get it right. Don't get any ideas, Michelangelo. It's just moss. Wait, what's that noise? Why, welcome, Hades. I'm pleased you finally decided to join us. Alright EC family, so much! Man, this episode is definitely one of my favorites on the channel, and also one of the longest, so thank you for watching till the end. But what a mission to pull off! I believe we got what we wanted, and then some. It looks like the Death Sprites have completed their task, and hey hey! 
spread the news that Hades has finally arrived, which means the Rhino Beetle games are ready to begin. Sound off in the comments which team you are and champion your chosen Rhino Beetle Gladiator, because in the next episode, it's all going down. Yeah! So guys, be sure to smash that subscribe button and bell icon now, so you get notified at every single upload and join us for the 2019 Rhino Beetle games. And hit the like button every single time, including now. Trust me guys, you will want to be part of this super fun and educational experience. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant League, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC and our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would just like to watch both some extended play footage of the new Hacienda del Dorado, the Toads, and as promised, a bonus video for the week with a brief update on some of the other ant kingdoms and creatures in the ant room. Seeing as these past couple of videos have taken twice as long to make, so I wanted to provide an extra bonus video for the week because I love you guys that much. Thank you for being part of the Antiverse. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is the name of the toxin produced by Toad? Congratulations to Prozone Kiddo, who correctly answered, Bufo Toxin. Congratulations Prozone Kiddo, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, why was the small original palm not suitable for 18 Toads? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.